I'm sorry, Judge. Not as to those issues, no, ma'am. All right. What is the state seeking, and what is your argument? Judge, I think one issue that I need to bring to this court's attention is the defense has indicated the lack of propensity for him to commit uh, other violent acts. It was brought to my attention by Detective Alan Proctor last night at approximately 10.30 p.m. He was uh, contacted by Jameer Dixon who indicated to him that on December 28th of 2013, she was at the Cobb movie theater when she was confronted by the defendant for texting. Um, she felt very uncomfortable about it and indicated that he was glaring at her the entire time throughout the movie and afterwards, she felt very uncomfortable with this. And that is a, a third party uh, I'm sorry. A third party who may have responded to news. Yes, Judge. And he also followed her to the bathroom when she had gone, uh, gotten up to go to the restroom and made her feel very uh, uncomfortable about his actions. Of course, none of this would have been reported. Correct. All right. And what is the state asking for a bond? Judge, in light of the probable cause affidavit that was uh, actually signed by Detective Proctor, I believe the court is familiar with the case that indicates that uh, on uh, accused is entitled to pretrial release unless charged with a capital life felony or an offense punishable by life in prison imprisonment. Obviously, he is um, facing a possibility of life imprisonment. I would submit to the court that the probable cause affidavit establishes that proof of guilt is evident when the presumption is great, and therefore we would ask this court to leave Bonnet set at zero. Your response? Your Honor, uh, we would agree uh, that at this point in time, if they're moving for uh, pretrial uh, detention, uh, that the court's uh, burden at this point in time is to determine whether, number one, proof of guilt is as evident or presumption is great. Uh, they can't do that by a proffer. They have to do by that by live testimony. And so we would object at this point in time or ask the court to find that they haven't met their burden because they can't do it by a proffer. You wish to respond to that, Mr. Garcia? The case law is clear. You can prove that by an affidavit, and it's an affidavit form. The probable cause affidavit, affidavit should be sufficient. Uh, the court is finding that um, I do believe that I can rely upon the probable cause affidavit if I find the contents of the probable cause affidavit do indicate that the proof of guilt is evident and um, that the there certainly while you have inferenced that there may be lawful defenses the court does not find that there is anything other than a presumption uh, that, th that there is proof of evidence <laughs> sorry the evidence of guilt is significant and the court finds that the proof is great in the probable cause affidavit that a second degree murder took place and Mr. Reeve I'm sure has already been advised by his attorney he is facing life in prison obviously the state needs to further investigate this in order to decide precisely what they will be filing but I find that since I do believe the state has in the probable cause affidavit which includes um, referencing that witnesses in this theater were questioned including the defendant's own statement that the uh, proof of guilt is evident and I am finding that regardless of his ties to this community that the state can seek a no bond and are entitled to no bond without prejudice for a hearing in front of Judge Syracuse to be heard further on bond and to have, if you wish, to have uh, a full-blown hearing. But I am ruling that there is no bond. Your Honor, if I could just make some arguments uh, in reference to the affidavit that the court is I gave you an opportunity to make an argument as to probable cause. What is it that you think does not rise to the level of uh, that the proof of uh, guilt is evident? Your Honor, the case law is clear that when you're at this stage of uh, pretrial detention, uh, mm -hmm. there has to be live testimony concerning uh, the proof that the court is relying on. You can't supply an affidavit, and even if the charges were actually filed, you can't supply an indictment uh, or a criminal I disagree. 
the, the importance of that and the reason for that, Your Honor, is that we have the right to confront these particular issues when, in fact, As I said, I'm setting it at zero bond. You can schedule a hearing with Judge Syracuse, or if Judge Syracuse is right now and he wants all of you to march into his courtroom, you can go do it now. But I don't know if he is available or not. He is a criminal judge who will be handling this case. Your Honor, uh, we would just object for the record then. And so noted. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, inasmuch as I am not setting a bond, um, I do want to caution you that Judge Syracuse, if a bond is set, will require that your client not be permitted to waive his appearance at any court hearings without the judge's specific permission, and should the judge later grant a bond, will not allow him to possess any weapons. Is that clear? Just to anticipate that possibility. Absolutely. Therefore, um, Mr. Reeve, apparently you can afford your own attorney? Yes? yes ma'am. All right. We will show you're hiring your own attorney. And of course, you are entitled, as the video explains, to access to the phone to communicate with your family or your uh, counsel. Um, I presume you don't want me to have him say anything. But did you have any questions for the court, or you want to simply ask your attorney when you speak to your attorney in confidence? It's no bond. You're remanded to custody. Mr. Reeves, uh, we'll, we'll speak in confidence. Yes, Thank you. You may step back. You all may quietly leave. All right, proceeding to the remainder of the...